Rocky planets larger than our own, so-called super-Earths, are surprisingly abundant in our galaxy and stand as the most likely planets to be habitable. The quest for another planet just like our very own Earth has long fascinated scientists, and they are forever searching for one. For nearly four years, NASA's Kepler spacecraft whisked through space, surveying our corner of the galaxy. It monitored more than 150,000 stars, looking for planets about the size of Earth that belonged to other solar systems. The mission didn't disappoint, Kepler found countless examples of a type of exoplanet known as a super-Earth. That may be capable of supporting life as we know it. These faraway alien planets might remind you of home. They're rocky, smaller than gas giants, orbit in the habitable zone of their stars, and sport a relatively thin atmosphere, where liquid water, an essential ingredient of life as we know it, might exist. But they're way larger than the blue marble, these super-Earths are a honking 2 to 10 times bigger in mass than our Earth. Because there are so many super-Earths out there, it begs the question, what if Earth were more like its larger cousins? What if Earth was a super-Earth? What would happen to our planet if it were 2 or even 10 times the size it is now? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Infinity Insight for more videos like this one? And ring the bell for more fascinating content. And make sure you stick around until the end of the video. It's possible that Earth and the other inner planets of our solar system were headed in that direction. No matter the reason for Earth's current size. There's no way to truly know what would happen to Earth if it were Super Earth, but scientists have some ideas based on what they've learned about our faraway cousins. Firstly, our whole planet's topography being stretched out. There would be a lot more land, and therefore a lot more space for people and wildlife. Continents would expand, providing much-needed relief in places where overpopulation inhibits the quality of life. There would also be far more water and other resources. It can be assumed that super-Earth or we can say much of this massive planet would be uninhabited. But whether or not life forms would still exist is another story. If they did, they would likely look a lot different than the life forms that currently exist on Earth. For starters, you'd be shorter. You, Mount Everest and every tree on the Earth would not be as tall as it is now, because if you increase the size of a planet and keep everything else identical, gravity increases, too. If Earth were twice its size, you'd be significantly heavier, because the force of gravity increases as the planet's density and radius increase. It would take more energy to resist gravitational pull, so the structures we have today wouldn't be strong enough to stand as tall as they do now. And you probably wouldn't be able to walk anywhere. The cruel twist is that as gravity increases, time would slow down. So you might be able live longer, but it would probably be a long life spent lying in bed with aches and pains. With a larger planet and stronger gravitational field, Earth would also experience more collisions. As a superplanet, Earth's greater gravitational pull would effectively attract more and larger asteroids, so Armageddon-type collisions would become more of a concern than they are now. But there'd be a lot more to worry about than just asteroids. Our satellites would also probably crash down to Earth, while buildings and bridges would crumble and collapse under the increased gravitational pressure. If the hypothetical super-Earth were even bigger, say, 10 times its current mass, dramatic changes could start happening in Earth's interior. The iron core and liquid mantle would also be 10 times larger, and with more gravity acting on a larger mass, the pressure beneath Earth's surface would increase. This high pressure could cause the iron core to solidify. Our magnetic field shields life on the planet from the nastiness of space. Without it, charged particles flying through space, also called solar storms, could slam into Earth. And would bombard the planet, putting power grids and satellites on the fritz, and increasing human exposure to higher levels of cancer-causing ultraviolet radiation. These tiny particles can cause all kinds of problems, including breaking up DNA and increasing the risk of cancer. The larger interior could make super-Earth more volcanically active than it is now. As the radius of the planet increases, there's more energy inside and fewer places for that energy to escape. More volcanic eruptions wouldn't be surprising. Plate tectonics, too, would be different on a super-Earth. But the exact effect is still an open question. A larger mantle would also be hotter, possibly causing more vigorous convection currents that would push plates around more. In contrast, it's possible that under the high pressure, the crust would be totally fused together and plate tectonics wouldn't exist at all. 
Based on the super-Earths that scientists have found so far, we can't really be certain Earth would even be habitable if it were a super-Earth. The Kepler Space Telescope was best at detecting planets close to their star, much closer than Earth is to the Sun. Most super-Earths known to science are almost as close to their star as Mercury is to our Sun. For Earth to be comparable, it would need to have an orbit of about 100 days. That orbit might be habitable in systems with a star smaller than the Sun, but if our Earth were that close to our Sun, all of the water on the planet would vaporize. In other words, Earth would be out of the habitable zone and, in essence, would become a steam planet. Surprisingly, many of the super-Earths discovered so far seem to be water-rich, like entire water worlds. It's possible that these planets formed from large pieces of ice and then later migrated close to their stars, which prompted their ice to melt. However, these planets might not be habitable, since their deep oceans plummet to a solid ice layer. This ice is not formed by low temperatures, but by the intense pressure of the super-deep ocean, which forces water molecules into a solid state. This ice layer blocks any interaction between the atmosphere and the planet's interior, meaning there is no carbon cycle, a process in which carbon cycled through the atmosphere, ocean, and crust. Or no mineral exchange, which regulates Earth's long-term temperature via an interaction between atmosphere and the mantle. That doesn't promote habitability, at least for life as we know it. The reality is that scientists have more questions about super-Earths than they have answers and we don't fully understand the physics of our own interior, much less that of a planet many solar systems away. We don't know what would happen if Earth were supersized or closer to the Sun. But, so far, it seems very fortunate that we aren't living on a planet that's any of those things. But we hope this video has given you some insight, and maybe inspired you to look into the question further on your own. Let us know in the comments, check out these other videos from Infinity Insight and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content. Thanks for watching Infinity Insight.